Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm counting my kebab needles, and there's one missing. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. Do you know anything about this? This is very serious. Do you get this worked up over a missing sock? Have you been talking to my wife? Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, um, I didn't know there was so much to know about skewers, but first of all, there are a lot of different kinds of skewers. I notice you've got some bamboo ones here. Absolutely, Carl. These bamboo skewers, what I've done is soak them for about 30 minutes. And this, when you've Put all your protein on and your vegetables onto it. It will stop it from burning on the barbecue. Now, or on sometimes the I find with these round ones that the food spins around on them. Indeed, it does, Carl. But if you want to stop that, you can put two in there side by side, and that will alleviate that. Oh, that's that. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are a couple of other ones here. If you have the metal ones, the nice flat ones, again, it will stop the food from turning around on there. Or you could get a round one, but make sure it's got a scroll in it as well, and that will certainly hold the meat and the vegetables right. on yeah. there on your barbecue. So yeah, it creates a bit of friction. Absolutely. Uh, great. So we're going to be using those today uh, because our special guest is Nora Duke, the Chief Executive Officer of Fortis Properties. And uh, what are we going to be putting on the skewers today? We're going to be making some beautiful salmon kebabs served on top of a couscous, a Mediterranean okay. couscous. And yeah. we have a Fortis chef with us today, actually. Steve Gugelmeyer of the Delta Fortis Hotel here in St. John's will be with us. And uh, I think he's going to be doing a tuna tempura. Ah, lovely. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 or send us an email at onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. And we're back, and it's uh, our pleasure to welcome the Chief Executive Officer of Fortis Properties to One Chef, One Critic, Nora Duke. And um, I've worn my power outfit <laughs> <laughs> because you're the first CEO we've had on the show. Oh, that's cool. And I'm yes, glad to be here. I may be applying for a job later. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'll give you the references, okay? okay. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'm out of luck. Uh, what are we going to be cooking uh, with Nora today? Actually, what we're going to be making Nora today, we're going to be making some beautiful salmon kebabs. And what I've done, I've already assembled them. We've got some oh, salmon on there some, and some vegetables, but I've put them on there very tightly so they don't turn around on the actual skewer itself. And I've marinated them in a little bit of honey and soy sauce. And I'm going to get Carl to, uh, to cook them, if you would, Carl. Okay. And then just spray them with a little bit of Pam there and right. put them on the barbecue. Leave that with you on, on the so grill yes. there. And what we're going to be making, uh, Nora, we're going to be making a Mediterranean couscous. So we'll get started. I've got a frying pan on there. It's a little warm. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And in here, I've diced some uh, uh, zucchini, and I've also diced some eggplant. And we're only just going to lightly saute that off. Okay? So I'll put that into the pan, oh, like so. And then I'll get you to stir, to stir it. it a little bit as well. Excellent. And while that's doing there, what I've got here is some couscous, and I put uh, two cups of water and two cups of couscous there, boiling water, and I'm just going to flake that up and add some of our different vegetables as well. And so this doesn't take too long? It doesn't take too long. It'll just wow. take a couple of minutes there, actually, with that one, that's for sure. So. so, Nora, when you were a little girl, did you have it in mind that one day you wanted to be a, a business person? You know, I don't really know that I ever really thought about that. I grew up in rural Newfoundland in a community called Fox Harbor. Very oh, yeah. proud to be from there. And uh, didn't really think about long-term plans. Just knew when I finished high school I would do university and mm -hmm. ended up doing business. And uh, I guess the rest is history. I've kind of gone on to do some pretty fun stuff over the years. Now, when you were doing business at uh, university, was it Memorial, by the way? It was, absolutely. Um, were there many uh, women in your class? Uh, a fair number, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was great, and I, I don't know if it was 50%, but certainly the numbers would have been 30, 40% mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how long have you been with Fortis Properties? 
I actually started out with Newfoundland Power many years ago, oh. almost 25 years oh, ago, really? yeah, um, yeah. and spent uh, 16 years at that utility, and had an opportunity um, probably seven or eight years ago to come down and try Fortis Properties mm -hmm. out. Uh, for a year, it's a sister company. So you company. came down to the waterfront? I did, yeah. and uh, did, came actually only for a year, that was the plan, just to try it out, and got into the hospitality business and loved it. Right, yeah. Um, so I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to stay. So I've been doing um, in Portis Properties ever since, and really love what I do. So explain to me, um, I always get these things mixed up, that's, that's just me, I get things mixed up. <laughs> um, how does Fortis Properties fit into the bigger picture of Fortis Incorporated? Uh, yeah, I get that question a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Fortis is principally a utility company, gas and electric. Um, mm -hmm. So they have one subsidiary called Fortis Properties that does what I say the fun stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> We obviously have hotels and real estate, so we're still kind of in the asset business, but we do different things other than utilities. So we're the only utility that gets into sort of diversification in a, in a, in a different sort of way. Right. So do you do a lot of traveling off the island? Uh, absolutely. So our hotels take us from here to British Columbia. We have 22 hotels, mm -hmm. so I travel to those. those. And then our real estate is all across Atlantic all Canada. across Atlantic Canada. So I spend a lot of time on the road. Mm. So how many employees would be? Under you, so to speak. 2,400. 2,400. So that's quite a lot. How do you handle your home lifestyle? 2,400 employees. Uh, who cooks dinner at home? <laughs> things like that. Well, I do travel quite a lot, as it mentioned. Um, I'm very lucky. My husband, um, his job doesn't require as much travel. Okay. So certainly, when our kids were young, so he does the laundry. Helped. Um, I do have the other uh, other advantage of having my mother-in-law live with me. She's a wonderful lady who really takes good care of us, so helps with all of that, and actually does a lot of the cooking <laughs> in our home. Perfect. Um, so it's just we've been able to make that work well, with my husband's job and with um, Rosemary living with us. It kind of all works. Mother-in-law's got a bum rap something. Oh, right she's now. a wonderful lady. <laughs> I couldn't manage yeah. without her. So yeah, that's pretty good now. No, I'm just going to remove good. that from the stove. Steve, do we need salt and pepper on this? No, already done. It was already in the marinade. Okay. Carol. All right. Let's move that. So, what are side. some of the challenges of running um, a twenty, approximately twenty hotel empire? <laughs> Yeah, it's there must um, be challenges. absolutely. I mean, hotels and, and real estate really um, twenty four seven operations. So things sometimes happen, obviously, in these facilities. So, really, for me, it's been about having a great team mm. um, of support around me. That really they do a lot of the day to day. Um, mm. And I've got a really strong team. People who are really experienced in real estate and hotels, and uh, they manage a great shop for us. So that makes it. Uh, and that's I'll the hospitality together. industry as well. It is. Yes. Um, yeah. People who are in the industry tend to love it. They, yeah. They've yeah. been in it a lot, many years, mm. many people, and they just thrive on it. Um, and I see that each and every day, which is amazing. Is it more difficult getting people to uh, get work? To start okay. the salad now. Uh, is it more difficult to find people these days to work in a service industry who are motivated and who, who will say, make a career of it. Right. Um, you know, in certain markets from time to time we will have challenges just because certain markets get hot, for lack of a better word. There's many opportunities. Um, that tends to change depending on any economy at any point in time. Mm -hmm. But I generally find people in these industries really love what they do mm -hmm. and they're passionate about it. And uh, I'm always amazed at the kind of service that we see in a day in and day out. So. Uh, they're just passionate about it. They love it, and um, they tend to find a home mm. in this industry. Mm. So, does Fortis uh, Properties have any plans to expand to all provinces in Canada and possibly go international mm. at some point? You know, we're we're definitely a growth-oriented company. Um, you may have noticed down in Water Street, of course, on the West End, we're doing a big office oh, development. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. part of mm -hmm. our growth strategy right now. Um, but we sort of just make sure when we grow, we do things that make sense for us. Mm. So we tend to look around and look for opportunities. And, you know, maybe the States might be an opportunity at some point. But mm -hmm. there's probably still some opportunities in Canada. So we'll continue to look here first. Right. Well, this so is what cool. we put in there, Nora, we put this the uh, uh, couscous. We've got some black olives. We've got some peppers. We've got some cucumber in there, some chopped mint, and some chopped parsley. It smells great. Well, we're it? now going to add some olive oil into there. Quite a bit, one cup, and we'll also add half a cup of red wine vinegar. And how's our uh, salmon coming on there? Pretty good, I Carol? think it's coming along pretty well, yeah. Uh, Nora, this is probably a question that, you know, would only come from somebody of my generation, but uh, what, 
what what was it like uh, trying to to climb up through the ranks, the executive ranks, uh, in essentially a world dominated mm. by male executives? Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting. If you had asked me a few years back, would I be uh, have an interest in being a CEO, I probably would have said no. Uh, it wasn't really something on my radar. But what happened over time, when you start to do different jobs and you get confidence in what you do and you get excited about them, you start to realize that maybe this is a possibility. So some of that, that's some of my experience. And I will say that there's been some people that have been really been instrumental throughout my career that have really given me an opportunity to try something new. Um, and different people at different points in my career and that's made the huge difference. They right, took yeah. a chance on me to say, we want to see if you can do this and throw something new at you. And when you yeah. do that and you build your confidence, that really makes a huge difference. Yeah. So that's been part of it, you know? So have you had big role models in your life? Uh, yeah, at different points in time. Um, you know, when I started as a new grad, there was definitely a gentleman I worked with back then that really gave me lots of new opportunities. And yeah. um, there's another gentleman a couple of years later, or a number of years later, actually brought me to the hospitality business in Forest Properties and gave me that opportunity. So I look back on them and think, you know, mm. that's what we need to do with our young people too, mm. is expand their expand horizon, it, yeah. get them to take on new things because mm -hmm. until you stretch yourself, you don't know you can do it. Well, that's exactly right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what advice would you give young people today, uh, especially young women who Absolutely, would want to you know. be Nora Duke one day? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of scary. Um, you know, just try out lots of things and, you know, uh, kind of be, be brave and do things that you probably think you're not really cut out for, but try them because you never know. That's right. And we are giving uh, that opportunity today. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, go that extra mile, take on new things, try out things and experiment and see what you like. like exactly. I never yeah. thought I'd end up in business, but I love no, it. No, no, so. yeah. yeah. Or even cooking on TV. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, everything's under control here. I'm going to head to the wine cellar yeah. and pick out a wine. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Carl. He goes down there, probably pick one of I think he's going to go with white wine again, maybe oh, today. I don't know, but he, he could go with red. He could go either way. So we've got our salad made. Looks uh, lovely. Salmon kebabs. What did it take us, nine minutes? Salmon cooks really fast. It does, doesn't it? And we don't want to overcook it either, so. Looks lovely. Well, Martin, this uh, is a bit of an Asian salmon dish. Uh, it's not just uh, salmon with salt and pepper. <laughs> right. It's got a lot of things going on, the ginger and the vinegar and the soy and everything else. So a uh, bit of a challenge, I guess, from a pairing point of view. It is, and always when vinegar is involved and spiciness, uh, it's always uh, quite difficult to match it with, a, with an appropriate wine. So that's why we selected these three particular wines. The first one is the Cuvi from Spain. Um, it is um, a blend of Verdejo Viura and Sauvignon Blanc. Great acidity, uh, very flavorful wine, Goes, would go great with that dish. The second one is the uh, Crios from Susana Balbo. Susana Balbo is one of the star winemakers in Argentina. This particular Torontes is the benchmark for uh, Torontes in uh, Argentina. Um, it is flowery, a little bit like Viognier. Uh, oh, so yeah. it starts out yeah. in the uh, when the first when it first enters your mouth. It starts out as if it would be something sweet, but it finishes really dry. Viognier is, a, is a, I love Viognier. That's a it's a beautiful uh, white wine, and it is kind of similar to that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so it's a very nice yeah. wine. That's good to um, know. The third wine is the uh, Albarino Condes de Albare. From Again, another fabulous wine. Absolutely, Spain from Rias Baixas. And it's a um, uh, it was the first Albarino at the uh, at the NLC. Mm -hmm. uh, very great wine with Asian foods or uh, uh, acidic foods, so it's um, it has great balance and it will be able to uh, withstand all the, uh, the the flavors in that. It's dish. also a great wine just to drink on its own. Absolutely, it's for an apéro or something like that. Lovely, great yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this one is uh, thirteen dollars, fifteen dollars, and twenty-two. Okay, so they're all reasonably priced. Yes, uh, absolutely. Nothing too, nothing too uh, OTT, as we say, over the top. No, um, no, definitely not. So um, I think simply because I've had the Cuvi and I've had the Albarino, I'm going to sure. go with the Argentinian, yep. uh, the Crios. Um, I'm intrigued by that one and the fact that it has a little bit of the same characteristics as Viognier. Absolutely, is, is, good is, choice. Is a plus. And it's got a screw top, which I love. You can start <laughs> drinking right away. Okay, yeah. thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Okay, now one, two, three now. Just lay that on that beautifully marinated couscous on the top. So the kebab, 
a little bit of garnish there in the center of the plate and uh, I think I'll just go in the dining room now and see what Nora and Carl think to our dinner. Okay, Nora, we have a wine here from Argentina. Mm. White wine, obviously, mm -hmm. to um, go with the salmon. Uh, they're making a lot of great wines in Argentina. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so, please, take a taste. Okay. And let's see what the CEO of Fortis Properties mm -hmm. thinks of Steve's cooking. Mm. <laughs> Very good. Well, actually, we all had a hand yeah, in it. Yeah, you mm. did, Carl, yeah. Oh, it was that's very good. good. Very, 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 good. very good, yeah. Absolutely. Very good, oh, lovely. Yep. Mm. Mm. Nora, uh, I know you have a daughter. Do you have, how many children do you have? I have two daughters. Two, one da oh, two daughters. One twenty one. Mm. Okay, yeah. oh, so now this is interesting. Um, do you think one day they will go into business and, no. and pursue the same path that you've pursued? One of them may. She seems to be talking that as a possibility. The other's probably going to go more the the health and the medical sort oh, really? of route, yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, But it's all about them deciding what works mm. for them. You've got to love what you do and yeah. we're just really encouraging them to explore their option, yeah. be open and just see where their mm -hmm. path takes them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind, but do you, do you ever give them advice as to maybe what they should be thinking of in terms of university or college, certainly, that sometimes, sort of thing? Sometimes, um, certainly one of my uh, daughters, my older daughter now, certainly has been trying to figure out what she wants to do and just sort of coaching in terms of if you do this degree, what might be the master's program you might want to consider or whatever. So a little bit, but you, you want to give them their own space, space as yeah. well. Uh, a little bit of coaching, but I find they've found their way very well over the years. So do they have part-time jobs or anything like that? Do yeah, they? they both do, actually in the food service industry, <laughs> which is really interesting. <laughs> well, now, yeah, you never know. One of these yeah. days they may build their own food <laughs> service empire. <laughs> well, you yeah, going through now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what kinds of things uh, do you do to relax? Because I know that people in you know, high-powered, stressful jobs like you have, let's face it, need to build in private time, downtime. Absolutely. Well, probably the thing I enjoy the most is going to our summer place. It's a couple of hours outside the city. And nice. uh, on a Friday night, we <laughs> make that journey and head out there. And it's really try to keep it pretty simple, you know, like the, the campfire and maybe go out in the boat and do those kinds of things and that's really our special time and our mm -hmm. time to just chill and do nothing and be with friends and enjoy their company. So, so do you barbecue? Do you cook the lobster? I do a little bit, yeah. uh, although the men seem to take to yeah. the lobster with <laughs> boiling um, and even sometimes the barbecue. That's because it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> you take the lobster and you put it in the pot. <laughs> but we certainly like having lots of friends around and doing big meals yeah. and uh, we have a great time out there with groups of friends. So. Yeah. yeah, that's that's so my uh, free do you, time. Do you ever take longer trips on the boat, or just basically around yeah, the bay? Yeah, we tend to do the day trips, and yeah. when it's uh, cod fishing time, we really oh, enjoy that. That's yes. the special time of year. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. there's groups of us go out, and but tend to just do day trips. Um, some of my other friends have gone on more extended trips, but I uh, haven't done that just yet. But mm -hmm. maybe. Excellent. So yeah, cooking that cod's always a <laughs> bit of fun. <laughs> do you ever, uh, you know, spend time? Um, researching or reading about uh, other people uh, who've, who've worked uh, in the higher echelon of, of business? Yeah, you know, my reading tends to be things that are pretty light and easy mm. to read. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe on a return tri trip home, I, I might take out my reader and, you know, mm. read that kind of thing. Having said that, uh, recently I saw an interview of Isidore Sharp and mm -hmm. was quite intrigued with his life story and was given his book, so that's one I'm going to read very soon. <laughs> yeah. It's on my list. Yeah, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of interesting stories to be told, uh, you know, about people working in, in, uh, in business at, at the higher levels, CEOs yeah. and, and people who've owned uh, businesses and, yeah. and so forth. Perhaps you'll write a book. <laughs> I well, don't know about that. You never, you never know. <laughs> have, you read the, have you read, by the way, Craig Dobbin, the book about Craig no, Dobbin? No, I haven't. No, that's that a, might that's be a, good a fantastic one. read. I would actually recommend that book to all the kids doing business at, at MUN. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us today, Nora. That's it was, great. It was I really an enjoyed absolute, it. Uh, Thanks thrill so much for having me. Cheers. There we Cheers. go. And now, uh, well, it's all Fortis all the time on the show today. We have a Fortis chef with us coming up, Steve Googlemeyer of the St. John's Delta Hotel, and he's going to do a... Uh, Tempura Tuna. Stay tuned. Well, the Fortis Delta Hotel in St. John's puts out more meals than any other hotel in the city of St. John's. 
Think about it. They've got their own convention rooms, they've got banquets, they've got galas, they've got meetings, yada, yada, yada. Plus, they're responsible for the St. John's Convention Center across from Mile One Stadium. It's a massive food operation, and the person in charge of that, gosh, we're happy he found the time to be here today. The person responsible is Chef Steve Gogomeyer. Welcome to the show, Thank Steve. Thank you very much, Carl. It's great, great to be here. Excellent, Steve. Now, I see you've got an array of colors here, you've got an array of food. What are we, what are we go going to be making? Well, we're just going to be changing up the uh, menus over at the uh, Delta in the dining room, so I chose one of our appetizers today, and it's going to be a tuna tempura so we've got all the place uh, the mise en place already ready to go so yep. we start with a beautiful piece of uh, yellow tail or yellow fin tuna sorry and that's we have a very some very high quality piece of fish <laughs> <laughs> it is it, is. it yeah. for sure is so that's why you only get a little bit of a portion <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. all together it's definitely going to be a wonderful uh, amalgamation of flavors so we also have some wasabi paste which you can get already pre-done or in the powder form yeah and we just smear a little bit of that on mind it is going to be a little bit uh uh, hot, as yep. it is, uh, you know, similar a uh, horseradish family, right? Yeah, nice color on so, there as well. Nice. Fantastic. So we're just going to get that in there. Now we got a little bit of seaweed paper already cut down to size. We're just going to lay that in there, and we're going to wrap it, them right up. Well, it really sticks to it because of that wasabi on there, right? It? Yeah. So yeah. the wasabi and the moisture from the tuna is just going to allow that to adhere to it, right? If you right. need a little bit more water or uh, wasabi paste to uh, right. to so stick it together, stick really yeah. good there, there you yeah. Go, right? yeah. So you can do this at home too, for sure. It's uh, not too complicated as a restaurant uh, idea, you know, to, to plate yeah. at home. Well, the nice thing about, about these ingredients is that they're all readily available here in St. John's now. They are. The, uh, you know, and, and you can work with a lot of the suppliers within the city, you know, and a lot of the groceries now, like Sobeys oh. has got, it, got a big national section, sure, right? Yeah. Perfect. So I got a tin pour batter here. Uh, my, you want to make you know, sure it's not dripping too much. Oh no, we're gonna we want to make sure that the batter is nice and light, and it's okay if you see the uh, the tempura Ooh. through the, the batter, right? Okay, so we got nice. a nice uh, oil there. It's to 375 degrees. The reason you want it nice and hot is because you want quick uh, quick uh, sear here, quick color. So yeah. you get a nice, beautiful color on there. Right there, within seconds. There you go, and it doesn't take long at all. Now this is if you serve a traditional Japanese style, if you want to serve the, the tuna raw. Yeah, right? yeah. Now clearly yeah. if you want to you know, uh, sear it to a, a temperature that's mm. a little bit higher, if you want it medium or well done, then you'd have to start with a lower temperature oil, right? So you just adjust that according to your diner's So what case, you end uh, up with basically is it's kind of a red center. Most definitely, uh, right? Which it should is, be very much better, yeah. yeah. It's ab absolutely perfect, actually, for eating this type of product, because you don't want to cook it too much. It's so expensive. That's for sure. And, and it, it has a yeah. nice, pleasurable, uh, you know, to the palate when it's a little bit exactly, uh, less yeah. cooked, right? So, yeah. so, what, 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 so what we got some shiitake mushroom. We have a, a salad to go with it. So it's a quinoa salad, which the uh, Peruvians used to call, uh, or, or mm -hmm. I guess title, the mother of all grains. Okay, very healthy. Yeah. Into yeah. the bowl? Yeah, we're going to put that into the bowl. So the salad's already been composed, but the mushrooms we want to put in last minute so that right. they don't start sogging out. Sogging up, overnight. okay. So I just put so you know, maybe a, there you go. Quinoa has become very popular lately. It has, and uh, they get the white quinoa, the quinoa. They have the yeah. red quinoa as well now, right? Yes, so if yeah, you mix yeah. them together again, you can play with some colors there, oh, right? exactly, yeah. So I just let that sit and drip on a towel for, for a few seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And then we want to cut, you know, and there's many ways to cut it. I, I prefer, like, cutting in half, so we have one long side, and then two smaller pieces, right? And so for a nice presentation, just cut off the ends. Oh, pardon me. That looks beautiful, Steve. Right? It does, doesn't it? Absolutely. Wow. So then we can get to, to plating. So you can see now, if you come into the restaurant, it's something that goes very quickly, too. If you have all your mise en place mm -hmm. done already, it's something that uh, doesn't take much time to get to the diner, right? So a little slate plate here. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a banana leaf on top. So we're just going to place our, our tuna, which is ah, nice. Now, banana leaves, I don't imagine they're easy to get. Yeah, I, you know, I was lucky enough, there's a, a little Asian store, and they had some in the freezer. I was like, great. That's excellent, you know? yeah. So there's your tuna, here's your salad. So, you know, the salad has some green beans and some adzuki beans in there, the quinoa, and clearly the mushrooms that uh, Steve just added. This is just an amazing dish. I, I love it, I love it, I love it. And we're going to finish it off with some pickled ginger. Okay, so. All right, we'll get a little So what bit is the liquid here? Things. What is this? So that's a uh, potato and leek soup. Okay, yeah. And the potato and leek soup gets a little bit of black mushroom. Uh, that is so, so beautiful. Or black olive dust on top. Yeah. I'm, may I? You most I, definitely. Got, you go ahead. Steve, I know you want to have a yeah. piece. Mmm. Fantastic. Perfect. I have to okay. applaud. Well, thank Thanks you very, very much. much, Steve Gogelmeyer. Thanks for having and me on the show. That's it for 
Cubic. That's it for this edition of... One Chef. One Critic. <laughs> Chief, have a piece. I certainly will. My turn now. Mm. That's and, beautiful. Uh, you know, there was different garnish you can put on that. It's been seasoned with salt and pepper. Yeah. You know, and your traditional tuna. The Academy Award for Best uh, Best Actor. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, thank God. Call the Rogers TV Viewer Response Line at 709-757-9600 or email your comments to outofthefog at rci.rogers.com. Laugh. <laughs> Come on, laugh. <laughs> okay. Now really laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the Teletoon free preview for new series. Me next! Fresh episodes of your favorites <laughs> and hilarious hit movies. You'll know something <laughs> funny's going on. The Teletoon free preview. On now until September 30th. Call one triple eight rogers one to order. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the record for cramming people into a Volkswagen Beetle is 24. According to the capacity label on this boat, five with gear is pretty much the limit. All recently built pleasure craft, not larger than six meters and capable of having a motor of 10 horsepower or more, has a capacity label. This label indicates the maximum total weight that can be carried, including the number of adults within that weight limit and the maximum recommended engine power. Staying within those limits will allow for safe loading and sufficient freeboard in normal conditions. Freeboard being the distance between the water and gunnel of the boat. In conditions where the waves are large, reduce the load to reduce the chance of swamping. So don't go for a world's record in stupidity, boat safely and don't overload. For more information on boat loading and weight distribution, visit smartboater.ca. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. My name is Bugs Green. And I'm Debbie Green. And this is the beautiful city of Cornerbrook right here on the West Coast. It's winter, but spring will soon be here. And we got a series coming up for you right here on Rogers TV, Channel 9. And we're going to take you from Port of Bass to St. Anthony. And in Green Bay, White Bay, Bayport Peninsula, and then on to... Southern Labrador and north coast of Quebec, right up as far as Old Fort, as far as you can go. And then we're going to take you into Bonavista and the Clarenville area. Yes, we're going to take you all around. we got some great guests. Uh, we meet some great people, but we have some beautiful footage of Newfoundland and Labrador. And we hope you're going to join us every week right here on Rogers Cable TV. Looking forward to it, are you? We certainly are. Hope to meet you.